Okay, so today we're going to be talking a bit about, um, I'm going to be introducing my conveyor belt. Now there's more than one good way to do any job. I mean, uh, there's a, a good way to cut an onion, there are some bad ways to cut an onion, there's some good ways to cut an onion, uh, but there's more than one good way to cut an onion. There's a, a good way to travel um, to work, there's some bad ways to travel to work, but there are a number of um, there are a number of uh, routes that you can take, and you take different routes at different times for different reasons. So I'm going to be kind of this uh, webinar is going to be a bit of a pause, and I'm going to do a bit of a review and show you about how I'm using how I use the internet, specific websites, EndNote mind mapping programs, Adobe Acrobat Pro, as well as uh, Microsoft Word, with this filing system of making sure that everything is in one folder and that we are systematic and disciplined in how we file things. So I hope this makes sense. Okay, so let's talk about the conveyor belt. It's not uh, the best way to talk about the workflow from uh, internet to drafts to polished pieces, but it will do. Uh, to state the obvious, it begins with getting stuff. I prefer to use PDFs. I've talked to you about the, um, about the advantages of using Google Scholar, and uh, I download those. We haven't got time to talk about the Tamasat library. It's an excellent library. Uh, but the, the library has their own librarians who can uh, train you in the skills that you need. I've pointed out that particularly recent uh, publications, and for many of you, you're working on masters and doctoral projects and you want to start with the most recent scholarship on an area, um, that you can download those. You have to pay for them, obviously, but you can easily convert them through free or very cheap conversion um, software options. Academia.edu will continue to be an important way, particularly for young scholars, to make connections, professional connections, and to get access to downloads. But hey, you've got libraries with books. Um, think about getting a scanner and making a PDF and then OCR in that PDF. That way you'll be able to search it and read it and highlight it and index it. Whenever I get anything, that I believe I'm going to use. I get the reference, uh, the EndNote reference, I get it from the journal website or from Google Scholar or from, uh, if it's a book, I get it uh, using the function to access remote libraries in EndNote. It will change your life. Filing, it's imperative that you file all of your PDFs following author date. That way, as you've seen, you can put everything in a nice virtual library. It will be organized alphabetically. You can search for files um, with certain names in it, author names and key terms. It will make it easy. Another thing, uh, which I haven't spent a lot of time demonstrating because it really doesn't need a lot, is that whether you're a Windows user or a Mac user, you are able to uh, tag um, or add comments, key words about files. Continue doing that. That will be an easy way for you to find out uh, what family this file belongs to. Is it history? Is it geography? Is it linguistics? Is it about Thailand? Is it about Malaysia? Indexing. Um, I've demonstrated how to use uh, Foxtrot Professional Search. For those of you who are in Windows, Copernic Desktop Search is probably going to be your go-to program. Continue to index this academic library, this electronic library of yours, and that way you can search for specific phrases in a sea of PDFs and it will uh, produce results. Um, it will change your life. And then there's the important task of sitting down and reading uh, in PDFs and Adobe Acrobat Pro when you read you can highlight you can annotate and you can export these as as summaries but also uh, can continue particularly if English is not your first language can consider
finding out how you can turn a text to speech. Uh, this is uh, something that I do a lot. It's a great way for me to rip through short articles while I'm doing other work. I can be listening to an article being read to me. Some websites actually will provide, uh, some journal websites will provide you the option of hearing a PDF. I take notes. I take notes in PDF. It's like I've got a um, I've got a, a book, a physical book. I've got physical highlights, and I've got physical notes down the margins. Whenever I open a PDF, I can go to the right-hand column, and I can see what pages have I highlighted, or I can put three pages to the screen and rip through and see where are the yellow bits, where are the green bits. Um, this is a way of us remembering what we have read. And then I export this as a Word document. I file the Word document in academic notes and the only difference between the uh, PDF and the note uh, which is in, in, in Word is that I have the Word notes at the beginning of the file. And I sometimes embed, I usually now embed an EndNote reference, the code and the brackets in that note file and so if I'm making notes or if I'm interacting with ideas from page 113, I just copy the EndNote code in that section and then I say this is from uh, page 113 and that way I don't have to do any referencing at all. And then what I do is I collate. As I am pulling together ideas, I use mind mapping software, I may look through EndNote and I say these are going to be the most important references I'm going to be using in this uh, in this uh, writing project and I have the I have EndNote on the right hand side of my screen and I have I have mind mapping program on the left hand side of my screen and I will pull in references that are relevant to this writing project uh, in addition to that I will put finder my file, my academic library on the right hand side of the screen and the um, mind mapping program on the left hand side of the screen and I'm going to select, really I know the PDFs that I'm going to be citing that I'm going to be interacting with and I pull them in and so from this mind map I can just open the mind map and I can directly link to different files without me having to go in to Finder and searching for the name. This is going to save you a lot of time. I do what I did to PDFs, I do for notes. I've already begun to interact with ideas. I read a book, it makes an argument, it has some information. I, I reproduce those details in a note and I pull those in. And then ideas. I throw my ideas out, I, I, um, I do some brainstorming uh, and then I, from the little windows, the individual windows, I'll pull them into themes and I may even pull bits from notes into, uh, into individual boxes. And then what I can do then is I export this mind mapping program into uh, Microsoft Word. And that will automatically organize headings and subheadings in Microsoft Word, which is, which is a very basic but very important skill when you are doing particularly a long document like a thesis and uh, this is this issue of Microsoft Word is going to be uh, the topic of our uh, my next uh, s uh, study skills webinar but let's just go back and have a look at this one one last time this is this is how I uh, go about my task of, of writing uh, this is how I I keep a track of the things that I'm reading. We must, we, you must read. Reading is to scholars like water is to is, is to fish. Uh, you know, we need to be continuing to read, but we need to be keeping a, a tab, keeping track of the books that we acquire, and the books that we have read, and the books that we have interacted with, and we can do this very easily by being methodical and filing everything in a logical way, having one academic library where everything is in alphabetical order. 
I can use the columns and I can find the books that were added when. I can see which PDFs I've highlighted and noted by selecting a column uh, about when the file was modified. So when was the file added? When was the file modified? I can, if I'm working across disciplines like I do, I use tags. I'm saying this is geography, this is linguistics, this is anthropology, this is history, this is Thailand, this is Malaysia. Everything that is in the academic library is indexed. So I've got my own virtual Google. Google indexes every word and every um, website so that when I am searching something, it immediately comes up. So there are now equivalents of this for your hard drive. But you have to have something on the hard drive. So you have to go back, just as in the old days you used to buy books and this was your collection of books, or if you were living in a place where you were studying, you got to know your library and you knew where all these books were and you could borrow books for a number of, a number of weeks, uh, sometimes a number of months, uh, and keep them on your shelf. Then we have to, after we've read them, we have to make notes. Again, I make notes in, on PDFs in one, in one program, and that's Adobe Acrobat Pro. If I've got a physical book I can't get the electro, electronic version of, then I scan it, I OCR it, and I annotate that. But I, I don't just um, scan the bits that I immediately need to use. I take a bit more time, scan the whole thing, have it in my academic library. Mm. But I also have in notes, uh, the codes embedded in uh, the, the notes, which I've done in Word. And then when it comes to getting writing projects together, mind mapping is my default. I pull different files in. And the, most, the, other, the other thing is that I get all of my initial ideas out in a mind map so that I can pull them together and group them and then finally I export this as a word document and that is my outline for beginning to write. This has been a bit of a longer uh, study skills webinar but I hope that you're beginning to see uh, the coherence and the method that I am not only using, I've been using for a number of years but I'm actively encouraging other people to try. So thanks again for listening.